The Scanning Electron Microscope, Part 2, Demonstration of the Phenom Pro X, Nano 120A. The microscope we use in this lab is the Phenom Pro X microscope. It is a benchtop electron microscope designed for nanotechnology evaluations. The resolution of this microscope is better than 10 nanometers, very close to 8 nanometers, and as mentioned earlier, is one of the advantages of electron microscopy over light microscopy. The Phenom Pro X has three accelerating voltages, 5 kV, 10 kV, and 15 kV. Higher accelerating voltages result in larger sampling volumes by the beam due to its greater penetration into the sample. The choice of accelerating voltage in scanning electron microscopy can depend on several items such as the sample sensitivity to the beam, its conductivity, what types of electrons we are using to image, for example, secondary electrons or backscatter electrons, and also on our need to provide enough overvoltage for X-ray excitation when doing EDS analysis. Therefore, 5 kV can be used to image all samples, while the 10 kV and 15 kV are used for higher resolution imaging and X-ray generation. There are two types of detectors on this instrument, a backscatter electron detector and an X-ray detector. There is no secondary electron detector. The backscatter detector is a segmented detector used for imaging and can be operated to provide atomic number contrast and topographic contrast. There are three modes of operation for the Phenom backscatter detector. Backscatter detector full, topo A, and topo B, all of which will be demonstrated shortly. When arriving at the machine, note the status of the tool as indicated by the light on the front of the chamber. A solid amber light near the power button indicates that the tool is in standby mode, while a blinking amber light indicates that the tool is in hibernation. The message on the screen states the status. The machine should always be left in standby mode after use. To access the chamber, press the power button. The light turns green. When the unlock symbol near the bottom of the front panel is lit, slide open the microscope entrance door. The sample holder for the SEM is typically stored at the bottom of this chamber entrance. Remove the sample holder, handling it very carefully. Select your prepared specimen for placement in the SEM specimen holder. Prepared samples are usually placed on an aluminum specimen mount, which consists of a flat plate with a small aluminum stub projecting from underneath the plate. The specimen mount is secured to the SEM sample holder by insertion of the stub into the sample holder hole. For today's demonstration, we have a porous titanium oxide fracture surface as our sample. It is held to the aluminum specimen mount with a piece of sticky conductive carbon tape, shown here as the black material underneath the, the sample. This ceramic surface was lightly coated with a thin layer of sputtered gold to assist with the electrical conduction during analysis. A piece of copper tape is also used to secure the sample to the specimen mount and to provide better electrical conduction to the mount to reduce charging of the sample. Non-electrically conductive materials should always be prepared in similar manner since the inability of electrons to conduct away from the sample can cause charging of the specimen and interference with imaging.
grasp the specimen mount around the sides with these special tweezers and insert the short stub into the hole in the sample holder. Once inserted, set the height of the sample in the holder. The SCM sample holder has a black ring with a notch, as shown, surrounding a bulb which has a series of markings. Turn the bulb to lower the sample until the highest point on your specimen is in line with the top surface of the ring on top of the bulb. Then turn the bulb four more markings beyond that as measured from the notch on the black ring to ensure that the sample is sitting below the top ring on the bulb. Give the sample a light dust off to remove loose particles so they don't contaminate the chamber. This is especially important when examining powder specimens. Insert the sample holder into the slot shown until it stops, then shut the chamber door. The status light on the front panel should change to an amber colored lock button. When the specimen is first placed into the microscope, it is first viewed by an optical navigation camera capable of producing color images up to 135x magnification. This is useful for identifying locations on your sample or perhaps even identifying samples of interest if multiple specimens are present on the aluminum mount. Movement of the sample is controlled by clicking on the portion of the sample you want to move to the center of your viewing screen. The box in the upper right image shows the region you choose to view. The magnification, brightness, contrast, and focusing options are located on the left-hand side of the screen and are depicted by the magnifying glass icon, the light bulb icon, the half-filled circle icon, and the oval icon, respectively. Each of these can be chosen by clicking on the icon of interest, and the output of that control can be increased or decreased by turning this knob left or right. Further information on these controls will be provided later. Here's an example of the magnification control. There's an example of the brightness control. The 
contrast. And the focus. At this point, the sample is still not in the scanning electron microscope portion of the chamber. But we can set the conditions for imaging our sample in the SCM by clicking on the settings icon. When we click on settings, this menu comes up. The menu boxes on the left, labeled mode, allow us to choose our accelerating voltage of 5 kV, 10 kV, or 15 kV. The 5 kV with its low sampling volume can be used for all materials, while the 10 kV is typically used for higher resolution imaging. X-ray analysis is usually performed with the 15 kV voltage. The boxes labeled intensity control the beam current and spot size in the SEM. Low provides a lower beam current and spot size for samples which may be beam sensitive or experience charging effects. It can also be used for high resolution imaging. Image uses a higher current, larger beam size for most types of imaging. Point and map select high and maximum beam currents for x-ray analysis. The detectors menu allows us to choose the mode of operation for our backscatter electron detector. BSD Full has all segments on and provides good atomic number contrast. The Topo A and Topo B modes turn various segments of the detector on or off to provide topographic contrast. The menu boxes on the upper right in the settings mode show a variety of information that can be included in your recorded images. These could be measurement markers, magnification information, date and time, the mode, that is the accelerating voltage, the detector, backscatter detector full, topo A or topo B, data bars, and any labeling information you want to include. Each can be clicked on or off as desired. To label samples, click on the menu titled Label in the middle of the screen. You can then click in the box next to it and type in your label with the computer keyboard or the on-screen keyboard that appears. The live viewing boxes have resolution and quality controls as shown here. You can set the resolution, the noise level, and response speed, that is the refresh rates, for the image that appears on your viewing screen. Higher numbers typically result in slower rates of refresh and better image quality. Similar settings are available for the recorded image or the acquired image during picture taking. As noted here, higher values of resolution and quality result in longer exposure times as shown. To set up our microscope for imaging our sample, we choose the 10 kV accelerating voltage and an adequate spot size beam current provided by the image icon selection in the intensity menu. In this demonstration, we will show how the image can vary with our choice of detectors, starting with the backscatter full mode and then moving into the topo A and topo B modes. We'll start with the BSD full and set up the viewing screen image parameters prior to moving the sample into the SEM portion of the microscope. After choosing our settings, we can click on the image icon at the top left of the screen and get back to our low magnification image from the initial camera portion of the microscope. To place the sample into the SEM chamber of the microscope, look to the icon on the upper left of the screen showing two plus signs, one smaller and one larger. The smaller one is lit, meaning the sample is in the initial low magnification camera region. Clicking on this icon moves the sample to the SEM portion of the microscope. The tool will take some time to adjust until the image appears. The status of the transition is shown on the right side of the screen.
When the image appears, we can roughly focus it in and adjust brightness and contrast before taking it up in magnification. Click on the magnifying glass icon and turn the dial to take the magnification higher. We will use 8000x for this demonstration. The magnification status can be followed on the bottom of the screen. To attain the exact magnification we seek, click on the magnifying glass icon again until the F appears to adjust the magnification in finer increments until you dial in the desired value. Once the magnification is achieved, adjust the coarse and fine focus controls and the brightness and contrast controls For brightness and contrast, it is many times easier to set the brightness and contrast to auto mode by clicking and holding the icon until the A appears in the icon box and then clicking on it again to automatically adjust both contrast and brightness and then follow up with the fine focusing. This sample was prepared by pressureless sintering a powder compact of titanium oxide powder to approximately 90% density. Note the grain structures and porosity present. The capability of the backscatter detector to exhibit atomic number contrast can be shown by the brightness differences observed between the titanium rich grains of atomic number 22 and the brighter small specks or flakes of gold of atomic number 79 that was sputtered on the fracture surface. To view the same surface in a topographic contrast mode, we can go back to our settings menu and in the detector portion, choose Topo A and then click on image at the top left of the screen. A topographic image of the surface is observed from turning off certain segments of the backscatter detector. In a similar manner, we can get yet a different topographic perspective by going back into settings and choosing top OB for our detector. Images can be captured on a memory stick or thumb drive. Before any pictures can be taken, it is first necessary to make sure that a device is connected to the USB port shown here on the console. When nothing is in this port, the camera icon on the screen will not appear and the icon labeled USB in the settings menu will also not appear. Once we insert the thumb drive or memory stick into the USB port, both the USB menu in settings and the camera icon in the upper left of the viewing screen will be lit. After setting your acquired image parameters in the settings menu, clicking on the camera icon will capture the image. The status of the image capture is shown at the right hand side of the screen.
Chemical analysis of the sample can be performed with the energy dispersive spectroscopy option on this microscope. We first set up our microscope for the x-ray analysis by going into settings and setting the beam current spot size to point mode and selecting the 15 kV accelerating voltage. Because we changed our imaging parameters, we will have to refocus the image once again. Once the image is adjusted satisfactorily, we click on the icon entitled Phenom Pro Suite on the right hand side computer screen and choose Elemental Identification in the upper right. To allow communication between the two screens, we have to click on the settings wheel icon in the upper right of the right hand screen and click on connection settings to open the connections menu. Clicking on the connect or belt symbol in this menu shows the connection status with the label successfully connected to Phenom. In addition, make sure that the ZAF icon is lit in the Phenom Elemental Identification Settings menu. This is a correction routine that's applied to assist in accurate quantitative elemental analysis. To get the image on the screen for x-ray analysis, click on the refresh symbol at the top of the menu next to the image box on the right side screen. The image should then appear. We can then place our beam on certain features of interest for which we want chemical analysis by clicking on the target symbol shown and then clicking on the regions of interest in our sample where we want to target the beam. Note that the point is then labeled numerically in case we choose to do multiple points in an analysis over various regions of the sample. The analysis begins immediately as a list of the elements identified begin to show up on the screen. We can move from acquisition to analysis by clicking on the upper right arrow shown at the top right of the screen. This then displays the x-ray peaks as a function of the energy. In addition, the elemental periodic table below the spectrum assists in navigating analysis and a display of the spectrum. Elemental boxes appearing fully green means that the element is labeled as shown by the green circles in the spectrum. Left clicking on the element in the periodic table turns the element box green and labels the spectrum with that element in the region of energies where it is expected to appear. Right clicking on the elemental box in the periodic table outlines the elemental box in green and puts the x-ray lines, the k-alpha, k-beta, etc. for that element on the spectrum to show where the various x-ray energies should exist for that element. Moving the cursor into the spectrum causes a vertical line to appear that can then be placed at various energies to see what elements may appear there, or in the case of a peak, what elements may be contributing to that peak or close to that peak in energy. This information is shown in the list to the right of the periodic table. In our demonstration of the X-ray EDS system, we focused on the qualitative analysis of a fractured surface sample. That is, we were able to identify what elements are present in our sample. However, a fracture surface with its topographic features is not the best candidate sample for accurate quantitative X-ray analysis. That is, for identifying how much of each element is present. The variations in sample heights and orientations of surfaces with respect to the X-ray detector in a fracture surface can affect X-ray counting. Flatter samples fare better for accurate quantitative analysis in comparison. Obtaining accurate quantitative analysis depends on careful setup of the instrument so as to get adequate x-ray counts. This may mean counting for longer times than the standard time or even adjusting the height of the sample in the holder to position it for better x-ray collection. When performing x-ray analysis, this tool provides some information on setup issues, such as if a lower accelerating voltage is being used to do x-ray analysis or if the sample height is not optimum for x-ray collection, so that the user can make corrections. These warnings will appear at the bottom right of the screen with a red flag.
To shut down the tool, move the arrow to the upper right corner of the screen and click. A message appears at the bottom that you have unsaved data. If you want to save the EDS data, click on the check mark that appears in this message. If not, click on the X as shown. This will take you to the Phenom Pro Suite screen where you can exit out of that as well. To remove your sample from the SEM, go to the SEM screen and click on the icon at the top left of the screen showing an upward arrow with two lines underneath it. Again, a message will appear on the right side of the screen asking if unloading the sample is what you want to do. You can respond by clicking on the X mark for no or the check mark for yes that now appear on the left side of the screen. The sample will be automatically moved out of the SEM portion of the microscope. A green unlock status light on the front console will indicate when it is safe to slide open the entrance door. When the unlock symbol is green, slide open the door, remove the sample holder, Return the stage to its maximum height by turning the bulb on the sample holder. And remove the sample stub from the holder. The sample holder can then be placed at the bottom of the entrance chamber. Close the entrance chamber door and press the power button. It will turn an amber color and the message on the screen will say the tool is in standby mode. Since many of the samples to be prepared for the nano lab are obtained from colloids, we will show a brief sample preparation for this case. First, secure a piece of the black carbon tape to an SEM specimen mount. Next, place a piece of silicon on the carbon tape. The silicon will act as a support for the sample to be analyzed and also provides a good conductive path between the sample and the mount. Dust off the surface of the silicon. Using a pipette, place a drop or two of your colloid on the surface of the silicon. Allow the liquid to dry completely before inserting the sample into the SEM. All samples must be totally dry prior to insertion into the SEM.